so much, Rainy, guys. Give it up for Thank Rainy. You. Thank you. Have fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was fun for me. That was a lot of fun for me. Um, and I think we can all agree it was fun uh, because we found out that one of the winners had a daughter here. And uh, that's very fun. We all went to middle school. So. Okay, guys, I'm going to bring up uh, your next comedian. Uh, she is super talented and funny. You can catch her every Thursday with the uh, Comedy Collective Laugh Sabbath at Comedy Bar. Bring your together for Jackie Pirigo. <laughs> Professional chefs in the crowd. I can't tell that 
joke in the United States because they don't have hickory sticks, so they don't invite me to go down there and do that. Is everybody here from Toronto even? It's like you are, but you're not thrilled about it? No, you're thrilled! Everyone here from Toronto? Anyone here not from Toronto? Fine? Yeah? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you something that happened in Toronto. We all know about it, but you don't, but we'll tell you. One time in Toronto, like a while ago, a person had this bright idea to go and like climb up a 100,000 foot full-blown pier, 100 billion foot construction crane, crane, crane. Do you remember construction crane climber? Do you? You do? But like, if you do really remember crane climber, shouldn't you be like this? Yes! And not this? Yes. Crane climber! Okay, so what she did was, she shot up a crane, and then she like swizzled down to the end of it, and then she like frizzled down the dangler of it and hung out! You guys aren't impressed. I was impressed. It's all I could talk about that whole day and every day since and concluding today. Crane climber, 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 crane climber. That was me that whole day. I was interrupting people's conversations like this. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt. Crane climber? And people said this to me. They're like, Jackie, hush up and shush. They said, shush you. They said, don't celebrate crane climber. Crane climber is sick. She's sick. I was like, oh, she's sick on top of all that? Holy, I'm even more impressed. I want to see what this girl can do after she had some friggin' day quilt. <laughs> Right, though? Because I know when I'm feeling under the weather and I spot a crane, I'm just like, uh, 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 not today, not today. Ooh. Imagine our boss that morning at work. He's like, oh, you're not feeling well, are you? Okay, fine. Well, just rest up and uh, it's fine. We'll get someone to cover your shift, I guess. And then later on, he's watching CP24. He's like, Oh, oh, busted! She's busted! I think she could have come in. A lot of people didn't like Crane Climber, and I think you are all of those people. Do you know why they didn't like Crane Climber? Because I, I think I know why. Because it was a girl Crane Climber, that's why. If it would have been a boy Crane Climber, they would have been like, Boy Crane Climber, Toronto's newest daredevil, devil, devil. What will he climb next, next, next? But it was a girl, so they were like, girl, crane climber, she's uh, mentally ill up here, yeah, sure. And they're like, she's expensive to get down off the crane as well. She's expensive. That's what they said, oh, all that money. They're like, that's not high enough to break the crane climbing glass ceiling up there. And then they said this to you, they were like, lock her up, lock her up. That's what they said, lock her up. And I said, mm -mm, lock me up, because I'm her biggest fan. And I can't wait for her to get back down here on the floor so I can get close to her. Sometimes people take photos of me while I'm doing my jokes, and they don't turn out so hot. Everybody else's photos are like this. And like, and I'm like, Argh! my teeth grinding into dust. Uh, I suffer from an ailment. I don't like getting pictures taken of me too because I suffer from an ailment of acne. Oh God, I have that ailment. An acne ailment. I suffer from it. Oh no. Some people like when I tell them that, they're like, you don't have acne. No, you don't. Uh, yeah, I do. You just can't tell because I've got a thick spackling of CoverGirl troweled onto my plain ailing acne base. But underneath is acne, a lot of CoverGirl. Buy it at the shopper's drugstore. Oh, the shopper's drugstore. I go for the cover girl, but I stay for the this. <laughs> but they kick you off after a while. <laughs> but yeah, all I do all day long is Google cures for acne and get acne. <laughs> There's no cures. There's no cures. All you can do is tricks, tricks, and tricks, and movie magic. I have this one trick, like when I'm at home just in my socks and my plain face, no cover girl, I'll like be looking in the mirror and I'll do like a pose, like strategically with my fingers to see what life would be like without. So I'm like. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that would be beautiful like that. I have another trick where I just color like beauty pencil 
on top of the acne dots, so it's like freckles, like exotic freckles, like Cindy Crawford, but many. When I tell people that, they're like, but Jackie, don't people start to realize that your freckles are always in a different spot? I'm like, no, 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 it's simple. You just don't let anybody into your life. Well, that's all the joke minutes I have. I don't have unlimited joke minutes. I gotta get out of here. Give it up for host, Kara Connors. My name's Jackie. Give it over, Jackie Pierco. All right. Guys, we're gonna bring your next comedian up right away. Um, this guy has uh, performed Just for Laughs. He's also appeared on Kevin Hart's LOL Network, and he's recording his uh, stand-up album this uh, June 2nd at Second City. We're here to ask you guys for Ryan Dillon. excited to be here. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland. That's where I'm from. Basically. Yeah? Newfies? Yeah? No? Great. Great response. Thank <laughs> I just like to woo. <laughs> That's my favorite response, though, because I, I did a show at Comedy Bar at, at, on Lord Ossington a few weeks ago, and I was like, my name is Ryan Dillon. I'm from Newfoundland. And this guy in the back, he was just like, yeah! And I was like, oh, you've been to Newfoundland? And he was like, no! Yeah. But I've been to Halifax! And I was like, great! That's a different place, right? Like, that guy didn't add anything to the conversation at all. You want to get some tacos later? Yeah, I love sushi! Shut up. Shut the hell up. What are you talking about right now? But I am from Newfoundland, from the East Coast. Uh, it's hard to tell because I don't have a Newfoundland accent, and that's by choice. That was a choice, because it's very hard to sound cute with a Newfoundland accent. Like, hear me out. I'm going to say the same two sentences, okay? One without the accent, one with. I want you guys to tell me if you hear a difference, okay? So say I'm at a bar, and my friends introduce me to a girl, and I'm just like, um, I'll be like, oh, hey, are you wearing a great big t-shirt? Yeah, I saw the concert last year at, at mile one. Well, you were there too? No way, I was in section C. You were in section C? Oh my god, can I get you a drink? Smooth. <laughs> Newfoundland accent, come here, my missus, I introduced you to mother. Like, it's just not, like I said the same thing, but god, it sounds so different. Oh, I didn't care for that. But I'm proud to be from the East Coast. We're the nicest people in the world, right? Yeah, a little too nice. Gets a little weird how nice we are. Like, the first thing we do when someone comes to our house is we offer them a cup of tea, right? And you're like, oh, that's nice, I love tea. But we don't take the tea, because we think that's rude. So when someone comes over, nothing happens for the first five minutes, okay? Like, hey, bye, you want a cup of tea? No, bye, don't be at death. I want my chef to no, but put me hand me that and stare at the wall. No, you want tea? You want milk and tea? Freak, bye, I got the cow back. I'm looking for you right now. No, bye, no, what dragon tendency is? It's not a cent direct. Save yourself your dollar. Now you can get your cup of tea. And no, I don't want to drink the freaking tea. I don't want to drink the tea. I don't want to drink the tea. I don't want to drink tea. Nicest people in the world. We've never said yes before because we wouldn't know what to do, right? Like, hey, you want a cup of tea? Yeah. Two milk, one sugar, and that guy's like. I don't have any tea. I thought you were gonna say no. Like we're so nice. I did my first big show last Christmas. I headlined a theater for the first time. And I was really excited, and uh, my fr and my friend and my my friend's parents came to the show. Not my mom, but my friend's parents came to my show. And, my, and you know my friend's parents, right? Do you remember that friend in high school, right? That you go to their house, and your friend's parents made you feel amazing, but made your friend feel like a piece of crap. Do you remember that? It was always so weird. I went to their house before I moved to Toronto, and his parents were like, "Freight by Ryan here, moved to Toronto to do comedy. We're so excited for you, Jake. When are you gonna make us laugh?" Like it was just so tense. It was just so tense. But they texted me before the show, and they're like, "Hey, good luck." I was like, "Who's this?" They're like, "It's the Fishers." And I was like, "What?" Like we saw your tweet, and I was like, "What?" Like I was so excited. Then my mom texted me, and she was like, "Hey, do you have that twenty you owe me? Also, good luck with the magic." I was like, "Thanks, mom." That's what I'm doing today. Oh my god. What's today? Is today May 26th? Is it the 26th? Today's the 26th? That means my ex got married 138 days ago. <laughs> she got married to the first guy she started seeing after me. They were together less time than we were. And they got married in New York, a trip I planned for us. But we had to cancel because we broke up. And now our wedding photos are on Facebook. And my first part-time job was a wedding photographer. Right? So every time I see these photos, I'm like, ah, damn it, she's out of focus. God damn it, right? And she's overexposed, and she should be standing like this, so you can see the whole dress. And he should be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah she gave me this watch. I wear it because I'm over it. <laughs> it's 
It's not 8.30, it's set to the moment she left. Time and love! It all dies in the end, right? All right, sweet. <laughs> you guys got goals? Nice. I, uh, here's my goal in life, and clap if you're with me. I just want to grab a bird mid-flight out of the air. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, this guy, that's the most proud clap. He was like, my brother. Like, it was amazing. I don't know why. It, I've always had this thing, like, you know, you're, if you've ever been to the park, and, like, some birds got spooked, and one flew by you, and there's this little moment inside that's just like, I'm going to get that bird. Like, I don't know why. I've had this feeling my entire life, and I don't know what it is. Is it a dominant species thing, right? Like, if a bird flew by me, I'd grab it, be like, you own the air, but I own the land, and just let it know where I stand. I have no idea. But a friend of mine, he's doing his master's of biology. I'm like, he'll know why, right? So we were at a coffee shop, and I was talking to him, and I was like, hey, I just want to grab a bird mid-flight out of the air. Why is that? And he was like, I don't know. But then he told me some fun facts about birds, and he says, well, here's the one about pigeons. If there's a blue pigeon amongst the gray pigeons, the gray pigeons will make fun of the blue pigeon for being different. And I was like, oh. And then he looked at me and he goes, but birds are so dumb that the blue pigeon will spend his entire life being made fun of, never understand why, then die. And I was like, no. Now I know why I want to grab a bird out of the air. I want a blue pigeon to fly by me, grab it, look at the eye, and go, they're not alone. We'll be friends with the birds, right? Because we're all blue birds just looking for friends. That's what we are. Who here is broke? <laughs> you guys have goals? Silence. You guys broke? Yeah. How'd that happen? <laughs> Here's my financial goal in life, and clap if you're with me. I want to be at a point where $20 doesn't make such a difference in my week, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys ever wake up with $2.32 on your debit and go, <laughs> I'm going to die. I'm gonna die this week. Like, no one should ever do what I do when I get 20 bucks. Every time I get 20 bucks, I'm like, <gasps> oh, I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna get bread, and that's it. That's all I do with $20, get bread, because that's all I can afford. Like, what's the first thing you do when you get paid, right? You, get, you go get party, you go get drunk, you hang out with your friends. I get cheese, goddammit, holy hell. I get, that's the limit test for poor. If you don't have cheese, you goofed, okay? When I get 20 bucks, I get hard cheese and soft cheese, so I can dip the hard cheese in the soft cheese, okay? When I get 20 bucks, I get a stack of craft singles, and I make it rain and cheddar, right? Oh my god. I also, like, like, if I ever did get money, I don't know what I'd ever do. I'd probably buy new clothes. Because that's the thing, is like, everything I'm wearing right now is from a thrift store. And I'm not harping on thrift store shopping. I just love to put on a shirt and I feel the cold embrace of the dead ones, right? Ugh, oh my god. You guys ever put on a tie from Value Village and feel the man who hung himself with it? I'm like, this fits well to well. Oh my lord. But if I ever did get no clothes, I wouldn't know what to buy. I don't know anything about fashion at all. I was at Young and Dundas and there was this guy wearing a sweater. But we need to talk about it. He was wearing a sweater. And it, all it said on the sweater was two words in cursive writing. It said diamonds and cars in cursive writing because he didn't want to put it in common sta comic sans because then he'd look like an idiot, right? Like, what, what are you doing wearing a shirt that says diamonds and cars? Never have I ever seen a shirt that said two things on it that made it look like you can't afford those two things, okay? If you're wearing a shirt that says diamonds and cars, guess what? You can't afford any diamonds and cars. You've never seen diamonds or cars. You haven't even used diamonds to buy a car, okay? If being cool is wearing a shirt that says two things you can't afford, I'm getting a shirt that says chapstick and butter, okay? And you guys laugh, but it's a great shirt, right? Yeah! My name is Ryan Dillon. Thank you guys so much. You're going to enjoy the rest of the show. Good for Kara Connors. Keep it going for Ryan Dillon! All right, guys. We only have uh, we only have one more comedian left on the show. I'm going to give away one more prize. No more trivia, though. Uh, some of you maybe were here earlier and thought that I was kidding, but I wasn't. Um, I, you know, I'm hosting this show. The main reason I agreed to do it is I am looking for people who have cottages. Um, who would like to invite me this summer. Um, I am a lot of fun, great swimmer. My dog is trained to, to an extent. Um, and so I just want to throw this out there. So who here has access to a cottage? And uh, just so you know, we are recording all of this. So this is documented. This will hold up in a court of law. Is that correct? Yeah, this is legal. Uh, so if you would like the hat and sunglasses, uh, go ahead and throw your hand up if you have a cottage. Cool. Okay, you have a baby, so I'm probably not going to fit in your car. Um, it's a van. <laughs> you got a cottage? Where, where, what's the water access situation? Up north, that's not, are you telling me the truth? All right, what's the name of the town? North Bay? Is that, that's, is it that check out? I don't know why I decided all of a sudden you're an expert on cottages. I'm like, this lady has a purse. Is that a real place? All right, let's give it up, guys. Remember, holds up in a court of law. I can't wait. I'm so excited to go to the cottage, man. Uh, next weekend, you and me pick me up. I live in Leslieville. Um, so just come by. Not too early, though. Not too early. And I'd appreciate if you do the shopping 
ahead of time. I don't really want to waste time. Once I get up to the cottage, I don't want to be running around, you know, go to blah blahs, whatever. Okay, you guys ready for uh, you guys ready for your last comedian? Oh boy, this guy. Uh, you guys are in for a real special treat. Uh, you may have seen him on the TV show Sunnyside on City TV, and he's also got an original web series on CBC Comedy called My Kitchen Can Be Anything. Uh, please give it up for Pat Thornton. some shade and now I'm this guy. Um, cool. <laughs> when I was told that there was going to be a comedy show here at Echo Beach, I thought, I hope they got a good sound guy to take care of the Echo. You know, you know what I mean? Echo Beach? I haven't been here all day. Has everyone done the Echo Beach show? Echo Beach! Right? Okay. Um... <laughs> Want to take care of a little business off the top? I want to give a quick shout out and congratulations again to the Honda Civic for taking Car of the Year. I don't know if you know this, but when a car wins Car of the Year, they're not only competing against the cars in their class, they're competing against all the best cars in all the classes. That's pretty good. Just to be clear, I'm not uh, sponsored by the Honda Civic. I just think it's amazing what it did. I am, however, uh, sponsored by No Name Egg Noodles. So I do have to say this. If anyone has a birthday coming up for a loved one, and you're hard pressed for any gift ideas, maybe consider a bag of No Name Egg Noodles. The noodles so nice they didn't even name them once. Do you have an anniversary coming up? Maybe, what about this? What about like a, a bouquet of already boiled egg noodles? You know, they say it's the thought that counts. This would certainly be a weirder thought, but I'm pretty sure they'd still have to count it. That's how that works. That's how that works. Honestly though, these noodles are amazing. They go with any sauce. Any sauce in the world. Anybody want to yell out a sauce? Yeah. Anyone else sauces? Yeah. Yeah. Some of these I'm not hearing, but yes. I um, I was talking about this one time, and somebody somebody thought that they could stump me, thought they could stump these noodles, which I'm telling you is not possible. But they uh, they yelled out poison sauce. I'll tell you this, they taste amazing with poison sauce. What happens after, it's not really their problem. And even if it was, good luck tracking anyone down, they have no name. Uh, guys, I have a dog named Chicken. That's a true story, I have a dog named Chicken. And one time, I ordered KFC to the house. When the guy came to the door, before I had any kind of verbal interaction with this gentleman, I just opened the door and my dog bolted out past the guy. So the first thing the KFC man heard me say was, Chicken! Chicken! Thought I was pretty excited about my dinner, I think. <laughs> I have this, um, I have this sweatshirt. It's a, uh, it's a Harvard Law sweatshirt. It's, uh, it says Harvard Law on it, and it's from Harvard Law. And um, I have this because my, uh, I got it for Christmas because my sister-in-law actually goes to Harvard Law. She's a very impressive person. I think it's, it's fair to say that at some point in her life, I will try to borrow money from her. <laughs> but uh, I like to wear this sweatshirt for a few reasons. Uh, it's very comfortable. But also, I think it's funny. I think it's funny that people think I'm a huge Legally Blonde fan. I also think it's funny uh, when people ask me if I went to Harvard Law, I get to say, no, funny story, actually. I got kicked out of comedy school. But um, I was wearing this. Uh, down, I was walking downtown. I was walking at like, Young and Dundas, and I was wearing this sweatshirt, and there was this gentleman there 
sort of a dirtier looking gentleman laying on a piece of cardboard on the sidewalk and uh, he busted me on it. I was walking by and he went, you didn't go to Harvard Law. And I thought, oh no, oh yeah, busted, busted. Just my luck. I'm walking around wearing the sweatshirt just as the Dean of Admissions wakes up from a nap on Dundas Street. <laughs> um, I, uh, a friend of mine was passing around this thing a little while ago on Facebook. It was a change.org petition to change the name of Fire Ants to Spicy Boys. Now that's exactly the kind of nonsense I like. So when I saw that petition, I signed that petition, right? Uh, but the next thing that happens when you sign that petition is this screen comes up that says, do you want to donate to the cause? $25, $50, $75, or $100, right? And I'm like, hmm, I think I'm gonna need to see a business plan here. I'm not totally sure how my $25 gets us any closer to changing the name of Fire Ants to Spicy Boys. Don't get me wrong, I want it to happen badly. When I'm on a beach and I get bit by an ant, I don't want to be like, ah, oh, stupid fire ant. I want to be like, hey, a spicy boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But how does it happen? How do you do it? How do you change the name of ants? It says on this petition, that if they get enough signatures, they're gonna send it to Mark Zuckerberg and Michelle Obama. I have really, I don't feel any closer to an answer on that one. Are we flying them to Europe to speak in front of some science tribunal? How do you rename ants? This is a serious question. How do you rename ants? And uh, the whole thing made me think of this time. There was this time in my life, and I know it was in a lot of people's lives, uh, where a lot of us were playing Farmville on Facebook. It was a strange time, because I would lose just whole nights of my life. Just pushing this little tractor around and literally having no fun. And when you run out of gas, it asks you, it asks you if you want to spend real money on internet tractor gas. And I've never felt closer to rock bottom. And my finger was just sort of floating over the button there going, yeah, it's just a dollar thirty-nine. Oh wait, internet tractor gas? That's nothing at all. I, um, I got married a few years ago, uh, and what's great about that is when you're a comedian and you get married, you automatically move to the next level, which is wife jokes. <laughs> now, there's a level after that called divorce. I don't think I'm gonna do that one, but man, some of those guys are really funny. <laughs> but here's, uh, this is the first wife joke I wrote the first white joke. We went to the Dominican Republic uh, shortly after we got married and um, one of the uh, excursions that you could take from this resort is a helicopter ride around the island, right? Now it was very expensive so we didn't do it, but we saw a lot of helicopters is the point. One time I was there, I was standing in a pool and I saw pretty low to the ground, pretty large in my view, this bright blue helicopter, right? Now, all the other helicopters that we saw had been black, so it was a big deal. I saw this bright blue helicopter, and I said to my wife, I said, hey, look at that cool blue one. And then she said, oh yeah, what is that, Tigger on it? And I was like, what? And I guess what had happened was, at the same moment that I was looking at this helicopter, this toddler had walked by wearing a blue swim diaper with Tigger from Winnie the Pooh just like right here in the front, right? So when I said, hey, look at that cool blue one, <laughs> I 
I guess my wife had thought. I guess she had thought that I'd seen this swim diaper. And it had moved me to say, hey, look at that cool blue one. Like I'd been watching them go by all afternoon. No, no, get out of here. Wait a minute. We got a genuine ticker here. Honey! Honey! Look! Look at that cool blue one. I married this person. I think what's stranger is that she married me just casually thinking I was the type of guy who on vacation would be scoping out strangers' babies in their swim diaper areas. I married a creep lover, you guys. <laughs> I love my wife. She's, um, you know, she's funny and cool and smart and pretty and all that stuff, but I'm definitely going to make fun of her for something else again right now. Um, my wife likes to say, oh no, but she likes to say it like this. Oh no! And she likes to say that when there's a crisis, and she likes to say that when there's no crisis. Like, I've been with my wife for a long time, and I'm telling you, when it's bad, it sounds like that, and when it's nothing at all, it sounds exactly the same, exactly. And I have to go running every time, because my heart jumps every time, right? Like, one time, we came home, she went in the backyard before me, and I heard, oh no! And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa! And then she said, looks like my plants are gonna need watering. <laughs> what? We always knew that your plants were gonna need watering. They're not dead. The fact that they need water is the best news. One time, she's in the kitchen, I'm in the other room. And I hear, oh no! And I'm like, what, 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 what? And then I hear, we're almost out of Chipotle mayo. <laughs> almost. Chipotle mayo. How long has she even known about Chipotle mayo? She seems dangerously hooked on it. One time, I'm driving. <laughs> I'm driving, I'm in the middle of a left-hand turn. And I hear, oh no! And I'm like, oh crap, we're dead. We're dead. There's something coming at us that I can't see. We're dead. But then I hear, that dog's little hat fell off. And at first I was upset because clearly she endangered our lives. Clearly. But was it worth it? Was that reaction necessary? I say yes. Yes. That dog looks so fancy in that hat. <laughs> like I said, my heart jumps every time. So I have to go running every time. Because one time if I don't go, she'll be like, oh no, and I don't go, and she'll be like, where were you? My brother exploded. <laughs> um, I want to tell you guys a quick joke um, about watermelon sparkling water. But I know what you're thinking. Oh great, another cisgender white male here to talk to us about watermelon sparkling water. <laughs> or maybe you haven't heard this one before. Maybe just give it a chance. Um, I was at the grocery store with my wife and they had uh, watermelon sparkling water on sale. This big display of it. Liter bottles for 89 cents. All the flavors. What a dream. What a dream. So I thought, we need some of these, right? Grabbed a grapefruit one. Great. I reached for a lime one. Great. I go for a watermelon one and my wife is like, okay. <laughs> and like silently in my head I'm thinking, why am I getting attitude about the watermelon sparkling water? It's 89 cents. It's my 89 cents. Plus, plus, it says on the front of the bottle, with a hint of watermelon flavor. A hint. Just a hint. So just keep in mind that all the drama that ensues from this is over a hint. 
So later on, we're at home, sitting on the back porch, I'm having a glass of the stuff, right? And my wife was like, how is it? And I'm like, it's fine. And then she's like, can I try some? Silently in my head, I'm thinking, I don't want you to try this. There's no win here for me. But of course, in real life, I went, sure. And then, and then she literally did this. I'm like, okay, what am I, what am I supposed to do with this? And then she's like, it tastes fake. And then I surprised myself with what a passionate response I had. What a hard stance I took on this watermelon sparkling water. Because she said it tastes fake and I said, no, it tastes like watermelon and it's good. And then she said, no, you know what it tastes like? Tastes like someone put a piece of watermelon gum in a glass of water. And I was like, no it doesn't. And she went inside and I had another sip of it. And I couldn't help but feel like it tasted like someone put a piece of watermelon gum in a glass of water. But I'm never telling her that, man. Never. I'm going to buy that gum water for years. I'll put it out at parties. They're going to make a drink for her dad and she'll be like, no! And I'll be like, it tastes like watermelon and it's good! Someone asked me, um, if you're not going to tell your wife about this, how are you doing stand-up about it? Isn't she going to hear about it for sure? And I said, yeah, it's insane I didn't think of that. Um, okay, I'm going to leave you guys on this. There's a, um, they're making another Superman movie and I really like Superman and I would love to be in a Superman movie. But, I don't think I should be cast as Superman, let's be very clear about that. If they cast me as Superman, I would learn all the words that there are for fat and gay, and all the ways that the internet spells those words. But, but, um, I would like to play something in a Superman movie, so I've come up with a few little scenes of characters I think I could play in a Superman movie, and I just would like to do them for you real quick. There's a, uh, you know how in every Superman movie, there's that part where they're like, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, right? So in this movie, they would be doing that. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. And I would be a guy who just bought a hot dog from a hot dog vendor. They're like, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman. I'll be like, it's Superman. And then this guy would be like, yeah, I just said that though, right? I'll be like, oh, you did? Oh, sorry, I had a really farty ketchup bottle. So that's one, that's one character I can play. I think that's a good one. Uh, I, here's another one. In this scene, I play a janitor in a big office tower in Metropolis. I play a janitor and uh, Superman and some uh, like villain from space are having a big like battle through Metropolis and they come crashing through the, uh, come crashing through the building that I'm mopping in. They come crashing through the front of the building, straight through the back of the building, while I mop. Here's the janitor scene. Take one. Okay. Um, one more scene for you guys. This is the scene. This takes place in a pizzeria. And I'm a guy waiting in line to get pizza. And um, Clark Kent, Superman, and Lois Lane are on a date right behind me, okay? Pizzeria scene, I'm a guy uh, in line to get pizza. Okay, here we go. Uh, you don't got any pepperoni? No? Uh, Got any coming out or? No? Uh, so I have my heart set on pepperoni. Yeah, hold on. You know what? I'm good. I'm good. I think this guy's Superman. <laughs> Right, I'm going to leave you there. I'm Pat Thornton. Thanks so much. Give it up for Pat Thornton. All right, guys. Uh, that has been our...
our uh, CBC Comedy Tech show. Um, have a great rest of your day. I'm Kara Collins.